and welcome to another exciting edition of the Legends of Boat Racing video history series. Today's guest has won over 10 national championships, numerous high point championships, has been inducted into the Hall of Champions no less than three times, holds two world records, has been the scourge of Region 7 for decades, and is the standard by which all A Hydro and Runabout drivers gauge themselves. Please welcome onto the show, Andy Hansen. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. So, tell me about your boat racing career. When did you start racing? Well, my father was a racer uh, back in the 30s and 40s, and uh, I guess I was just following in his shoes because there was always uh, boats around, and he was a, a Johnson motor dealer very early in his life, and there were a lot of outboard motors around, and I was uh, enjoyed working on them and playing with them, and and learning how to fix them when I was just a young boy. Hmm. So they were like my toys as I was growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun toys. I ran my first race in 1951. I was uh, eight years old and my father lied my age so that uh, I could run because my older brother was also running at Jay at the same time and he thought it would only be fair if both his sons got to run, not just one of them. Makes sense, makes sense. Um, so, when you were a kid, when you were young and first starting, who were some of your boat racing heroes? Well, I will start with um, the Stippics and the Headlands and Dr. Wilson, some of the Berghauers. Um, would have been, uh, how about uh, DeWald and the Ammons were out east. Uh, Craig Salvage would have been on the west coast. Um, some of the Dawes were in California. So there were people all over the country who uh, I've always looked up to who were great racers. You've spent most of your time in the A Hydro and the A Runabout class. Can you tell me which one you prefer? I've always preferred the A Runabout. Um, it's more of a challenging ride. It's much more fun to drive. Um, it's just a very exciting ride where you become part of the boat as it's running down the course. Compared to the Hydro, you're just kind of mostly sitting in the Hydro and it's not quite as unique as driving the runabout. Having watched you race both of them for many years, you always do seem to come more alive when driving the runabout on the water. Um, tell us about some of your toughest competitors throughout your years of racing. Well, there's been uh, many people through the many years I've been running, um, so I, it's hard for me to pick one without knowing a, a, a time period. I mean, Give us a time period, maybe say in, in the in 70s in, or the 80s? In the 70s it was probably the Hutchins Okay. and, the, and, and into the 80s I think they were still running uh, them too. Um, later in, in the late 70s or early 80s um, the West Coast had some fantastic A runabouts. Uh, Craig Salvage was probably the boy to beat uh, at that time. Um, then as we moved into the 90s, there were some New York drivers and East Coast drivers. Obviously the DeWalds were just dominating the classes for many, many mm. years. Dave DeWalt? Or yeah, with David, well, even Craig. Okay. <laughs> so I ran with, with Craig ran also, but uh, yeah, David would have been my fiercest competitor and uh, always did better than I did. <laughs> he was a pretty good driver. I heard you had to drive perfectly, perfectly to beat Dave. Well, yeah, I don't think I was ever that good. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the local area, um, we had more Berghauers. A guy named Steve Warnock was pretty good. <laughs> he used to beat me occasionally, and his brother I ran against several times. Oh, yes. So uh, there's been a lot of people throughout the years who I've had to run against. Um, tell us about one of your favorite moments in boat racing. My favorite moment would have been when I won the Nationals in a runabout in 1970. It was my first Nationals win and it was very exciting and there were a lot of boats and I was just tickled to death that I could uh, go win that race. Absolutely. That's, who did you beat that year? Do you remember? Oh, Clark Maloof <laughs> ended up second. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of a Seattle guy. Ooh. Oh, who did I, I just told you his name a minute ago. Salvage. Salvage was, uh, no, it was Salvage was later. I guess it would have been Clark Maloof in 1970. Wow. 
That's still a good guy to beat. Yeah, that was he was a very famous driver at that time. <laughs> How yes. many people were entered? Do you remember? Well, it was it been sixty or seventy boats? There was a lot of boats that ran back then. Because I can remember um, one year we went to Hinton, West Virginia, and there was uh, 66 A runabouts, and there was five open spots, and they broke us into six groups, 11. Yeah. And the slowest first didn't get in. Right. <laughs> so that was quite a challenge. I won that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good year. That's a good year. So very few boat racers throughout the years have, have done everything themselves. Usually you get a boat racer that does their own motors but then buys a boat and buys propellers or builds boats but then needs help getting the motors and whatnot. But you are one of the few individuals who does absolutely everything himself. You build your own boats, you work your own engines, and over the past decade or so you've started doing your own propellers as well. And you've won nationals with, with all of your equipment. Can you tell us how you got started doing everything yourself? Well, I started building um, boats when I was 15 or 16 because my grandma had bought me a Sidcraft to run and I ran the Winnebago Land Marathon and when I finished the race, the bottom fell off and we called the company that made it and they said they'd had some bad glue and would replace the bottom free, but I had to send the boat back and forth at my expense and I didn't have enough money to do that, so I had to learn how to start fixing boats and to start building boats. <laughs> So since that time, uh, I built up 160 boats, um, most of them for myself. So I enjoyed that very much. And my father was a mechanical engineer, and he always worked on motors and taught me how to work on motors, and I've always enjoyed that. So that's how I got into doing the, mo the motor work. And in the last 10 years, I've been trying to learn how to do propeller work. And I had a bunch of good teachers help me with that. One being Papa Smith would have been the first. Uh, second would have been um, Vic Brinkman. And the third would have been Bob Hetzel, who was a mercury propeller man. So mm -hmm. I've had some very talented people try and teach me. And I'm trying to pick it up, but uh, I'm not as quick or bright as they are, but uh, I'm learning. <laughs> a lifetime I think to learn how to do propellers. It is. Um, so over the past years you've also shown some support for the USA team. Can you tell us a little bit about why you support the USA team? Well I'm proud of the fact that uh, we're sending the team all over the different countries to represent us and I think that's quite a unique uh, circumstance and, and something that we're all very proud of and we look forward to seeing and hearing the results on every time they go on their on their ventures. Thank you for joining us today, Andy. Oh, it's been my pleasure. Thank you.